relationship with God. And that's what I mean, joy to know. They think that they have to stop doing this and stop doing that and they can't be who they are. But the thing is, when you start to, when you start to develop that relationship with God and if you are serious about your walk, those things that you're concerned about, they go away, they don't mean nothing. If you just focus on your relationship with God, those things will surely fall by the wayside. And then you look up one day and you be like, Lord, I remember I used to be into that, but I ain't even into that no more. And in this day and time, you need a relationship with God. It is so dark out here, and that is your sanity. That is your sanity. That's how you get through all the trials and tribulations. Everybody who has came up here today has the beginning and the end of their story has begun with God. So with that being said, if you do not have a relationship, is there a preacher? Anybody want to get saved today? Anybody read <laughs> I'm going to let that go because then I'm, I ain't ready for that. I, I'm definitely not going to be no minister or preacher. No, I'm going to let that go. I'm going to let that go. Do we have any ministers or spiritual leaders in the, in the house tonight? No. Right here. So... Real fast, this is what I want to do before we before we move on. We have one more, we have one more speaker, and we have one more spoken word artist, and then we are done with the night. I really appreciate everyone coming up tonight. But before we go forth, I just want someone to say a really, really quick prayer. Just something of some just give some words of encouragement to our to our leaders. Come on. We already we already know who's coming. I already had you select yourself. <laughs> That song was just so powerful, it really touched my heart, it really did. And I know that I'm nothing without God and can't do anything without God. And we all do have a story to tell, but you gotta be ready and healed to tell your story. Father, we just come before you tonight. We honor you, we praise you, we bless you. It's only because of you that we are all here in our right minds right now, God, we thank you that out of everything that we have been through in our lives, we are still here. Lord, we thank you that the thoughts you think towards us are really good and not evil. You have an expected end. You have an awesome hope in the future for each and every one of us. Oh, God, I pray that you would keep everybody covered in your blood tonight. Keep us safe from danger, seen and unseen. Touch us in our inner being that we will be healed, that we will come into the knowledge of who you are and that we will trust you to change us and to make us into what you would have for us to be blessed. Everyone that spoke on this platform tonight, give them joy for their sorrow and we know that we've been made into it for a night but joy comes in the morning god i speak i, I speak isaiah 54 and 17 over everybody's life that no weapon that is formed against us shall be able to prosper we thank you and we praise you in jesus name amen tonight. Um, my name is Marquita Grayson, also known as Gutter. That's the picture of me up there. That's what I used to look like. This is what I look like now. Amen. And the woman that just prayed, that's why I'm here, y'all. That's my mom. She kept me in her prayers. For 17 years, I was in a homosexual lifestyle for 17 years of my life. God delivered me and set me free. But we're not going to start there. I'm going to take y'all back to when I was 10 years old. At 10 years old, I had my first sexual experience with a woman at the age, young age of 10. I knew in the kindergarten that I was attracted to women. I knew very, 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 very young. Um, but growing up in a Christian household, it was hard for me to come out. Okay, so I've been in and out of jail my whole entire life. My first time ever going to jail, I was 12 years old. I got arrested for fighting the police in school and beating up the principal. Very troubled kid. I went to jail. I spent three days in Bridge House, 
came home. Two years later, maybe two or three years later, I think, yeah, like three years later, I was 15. I got arrested for a gun charge, a robbery, and a kidnapping. I spent a lot of time in jail um, for that, came home. I constantly went back and from the ages of 12 to 22, I constantly went back and forth to jail serving bids for guns, drugs. I started selling drugs at 13 years old. I sold crack, I sold dope, I sold weed, anything I can get my hands on, I sold. Um, it wasn't until I, two weeks after my 18th birthday, I got sent to WCI for getting caught with a gun and like a quarter pound of weed. I went and I served a two year sentence for that. Um, I served that two year sentence, came home, went right back to the streets. Well before that, oh, let me take you back. Before that, I went to jail for dope. I did six months for that. I came home for 45 days and went back for the gun for two years. So I was constantly in and out of prison, constantly in the streets. I did nothing but hang with the boys. Was harder than all the boys. Did anything I wanted to do. I carried guns every single day, sold dope every single day. I scammed, you name it, I did it. I robbed old ladies for their pocketbooks. Whatever I had to do, I did in the streets. And I was doing it at a very young age. So I got back into the streets. I graduated to start selling weight. So I started getting money. By the age of 22, 23, I, I, I seen over a million dollars. I was really, really getting money, really, really telling grown men what to do. That was my life. They called me gutter, that's what I did. Um, so at the age of 17, I was diagnosed with bipolar schizophrenic. I am a stable bipolar schizophrenic, but for many years of my life, I wasn't. So that, I will always snap out, I hear things, I see things, um, just really off the hook and crazy. Never wanted to take my medication, just was out here wilding. Um, I've been in and out of the Rockford Center, Metalwood, my whole entire life. Um, I struggle with depression. It's been many times I tried to kill myself because I didn't want to live anymore. I've been through that. So it wasn't until I turned about 28 years old and all of my friends were getting killed, all of my friends were getting sent to the feds for a major time. Um, I was out on bail for a major uh, drug trafficking charge. I had a lot of things going on with that. And at the time, I wasn't mentally stable. So my lawyer told me to just chill. So I chilled for a while. So while I was chilling, I wasn't making money. I was living off of my savings. I only had like $250,000 left in my name. So. Holy. <laughs> so I had, so I had, to, off, so I had to live off of that. So after a while, I, when I spent all the money, when I spent all the money and broke up with my girlfriend because she stabbed me three times with a butcher knife, they thought I wasn't gonna make it. I had blood in my lungs. They thought I was never gonna walk again, but I did. By God's grace, I walked again. So, I did that. So once I, people ask me every day, like, Marquita, what, what was your ending point for you to just want to just give your life to God and just turn your whole life around? I lost all my friends, y'all. All my friends are either in prison for a very long time or they died. I got tired of burying my friends. I got tired of all my friends leaving me from going to jail. And I remember the last case that I caught, I was out on bail for two years. I had a GPS tracker on my leg. I paid the bills bondsman to let me run around and do whatever I want. I gave him 2500 and he just let me do whatever I want. I would turn, I would keep it on, turn it off, and just do whatever I want. But that's me to hear there. You was a boss for real. Yeah, I was a boss for real. That's boss, that's boss yeah. stuff. That's boss stuff. I was, I was a boss for real. Yeah, so so that that was that. I ended up beating this case. I was supposed to get seven years upstate in Muncie, PA, because I got caught in PA. I got caught coming back from the poppies. I got caught with 500 bees. And I still remember that day because I cussed the plug out. I was really supposed to come get 4,000 bees, but he only gave me five. I cussed him out. He only gave me 500. Excuse me, what's bees? What's that? Bundles. 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 He only okay. gave me 500, I cussed him out, but that was God. Cause on my way back, I got caught with the 500 bees. Wow. Was out on bail, and I stayed out on bail for two years. And I spent like 30 grand on a lawyer for that case. 
I just said, how much to make it go away? He told me 25, I gave him 30. So, we go to court, we go to something called a suppression hearing. We get a suppression hearing, we in there all day. Come to find out they got this thing called metadata where they can go inside of the police computer and find out when they did what, when they filled out what type of paperwork, when they, basically they went there and found out when the judge sent the warrant online. They searched the car 45 minutes before the warrant was signed. I walked out of the courtroom. I'm telling you, I got caught with 500 beasts. Everybody called me a rat. Everybody called me a snitch because they couldn't believe I beat the case. It was by God's grace that I beat that case. Wow. It was at that time that I asked God, I said, I gotta be here for a reason. I'm here for a reason. All my friends are dead. All my friends are going to jail. And they got major time. My friends got major time. I don't know when I'm gonna see my friends again. So I went broke, I lost the love of my life, and I also was a local rapper too. I was coming all over the radio station. I couldn't go to a club without them calling out my name, singing my songs. People calling me like I'm just at this party, I'm hearing your song. So I was very well known here, Philly and Jersey. And by me not hustling no more, because I was funding my rap career with drug money. By me not hustling no more, I couldn't fund my rap career anymore. So just imagine being broke, losing the love of your life, and then feeling unsuccessful. I became very, 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 very depressed. I cried myself to sleep every night for two years. Now, one thing I always tell about people, when you don't have no money, you think life is just, life is just crazy, it's, it's regular. But once you touch real money and lose it, you'll want to die when you lose that money. I'm telling you. You wonder why don't white people want to jump off of bridges and stuff when they lose their money? You think they crazy? No, it hurts. It really bothers you in a crazy way. So it bothered me in a crazy way. So what I started doing, I started sipping Promethazine every day. I was spending like $1,200 a week on that. I started sipping that every day, losing weight, getting real small. I started going, I started clubbing from Monday to Sunday. Literally, I'm not exaggerating. I would go to Philly. And Philly, they party every night. And it's a party every night in Philly. It ain't like down here, they party every night. And their bars stay open to seven o'clock in the morning. So I'm going in strip clubs, I'm having sex with all the strippers. Every night I'm taking two, three strippers home. I'm having sex with them because I was really depressed and I, I was really, really sad. So what I was doing is trying to fill the void. I was using all these things to try to fill the void. So I'm having sex with all these girls. I had sex with over 100 women. I, it, it's so many women I didn't have sex with. I walked past them in the street, don't even remember them. So I, 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 I was doing that. So after I was doing that, I just, the pain wouldn't go away. So I started drinking and mixing the drinks with the pro magazine. Everybody know you're not supposed to do that. If you sit lean, you're not supposed to drink with it. I would drink with it. So I kept just being in pain, being in pain. I was so depressed. So after a while, I stopped getting in the shower. I stopped cutting my hair. I stopped brushing my teeth. I just was the worst. Like I, I just, people looked at me, didn't even recognize me. They used to be seeing me being well put together. So I was just real, real depressed and I would call my mom, the woman that just prayed, that's my mom. I would call her and like, yo mom, I'm really, I'm really going through it. And she could see it to me. So she just told me like, just start talking to God. So this was about six years ago. So I started talking to God. And once I started talking to God, he led me to go fix my mental health because again, I'm a bipolar schizophrenic and I go through deep, deep depressions. So I went in there out of Rockford probably like three times. I couldn't get myself together, kept going on suicide watch. I couldn't get myself together. So they put me on medication. I began to take the medication and medication made me more depressed. By the time I, I, I end up being on about six different medications. So I get, took the medications, I start going to therapy. And this is one thing I tell people too. Therapy and Christ work miracle. Yeah. All of us have been through trauma in our life. Each and every person in this room, you have been through trauma. Don't, people think that trauma is just certain things. No, we walk outside our house, our friends are getting killed, people are dads and, and moms and stuff on drugs, people going in and out of prison. That's trauma, that's not regular. We're not supposed to see that. Teach, teach. We're not supposed to see that at all. Every person in this room has been through trauma. But I'm gonna tell you how you heal your trauma. They tell you time heals all wounds. It doesn't, baby. What you do with your time will determine whether you heal from your wound or not. It's what you do with your time. If you suppress it, it's not gonna work. It's gonna show up in different areas in your life. What you do with your time will determine whether you heal from the wound or not. 
And that's what I did. What I did with my time was I went to therapy once a week and I took my medication. So in the beginning, they won't tell you this when you when you are when you have a mental health problem. They won't tell you that it takes you five years to become stable from the beginning. Wow. It took me five years of taking medication and going therapy to to be labeled stable to go back into society. Wow. So they just April of this year, they be, they declared me stable because I stayed on my medication, I stayed up with my therapy. So as I began to do that, I uh, just kept praying to God. And I never would talk to God about being a homosexual. Like I just, I never would. And that never would be in our conversations. I just wanted to feel better. I was in pain, I was hurting. Can you imagine crying yourself to sleep every night for two years? And I'm not exaggerating. I was literally crying myself to sleep. So, after a while, I just, I just kept going to church. I just kept praying. I just, and I ended up moving into Atlanta early this year. I moved there, and I went there. I had two nice jobs. Went down there, bought a car. I was doing all this stuff. So I, I worked at this strip club called King of Diamonds down there. Mm -hmm. When I got in King of Diamonds, I didn't like the way I felt. I no longer, I thought the women were nasty. Anybody that know me, I was in. The, it, it, anybody that know me when I was in the street, strip club was my thing. If you couldn't find me, you come to Onyx. I'm in there. Each and every time you come to Onyx, I'm in there. I just couldn't stand to look at these women anymore. So I'm like, what's going on with me? So we get to the studio. They they sip and lean. So I'm like, I didn't want none. So I'm like, what's going on with me? They drinking liquor. I didn't want none. I'm like, what's going on with me? So I began to talk to my mom about it. She like, God delivered you, and you don't even know. Like, I couldn't stand the thought of none of this stuff. She like, God delivered you, you didn't even know. So when I'm down there, and this, and people think I'm crazy when I say this. They was offering me a lot of stuff, because I'm a, I'm, I'm a very talented artist. Them artists that y'all listen to, they, they play in witchcraft. Whether y'all want to believe it or not, that's what they do. That's how they get their Tell the truth about it, man. They play in witchcraft. Tell the truth about it, man. They offered me to do some sacrifices and all that. They told me I was going to be bigger than Michael Jackson and Beyonce. Put together, if I would do this ritual. They had two Netflix shows on the line for me and everything. And people keep asking me why I come home from Atlanta. I don't tell this story too much, but God is leading me to tell y'all. I didn't want to do the ritual, y'all. I didn't care about the money or the fame. I did not want to do the ritual. I came home, I gave God a sincere yes. I began to pray, and one of my friends told me, and tap into your heavenly language. Now, if you have a relationship with God and you do not speak in tongues, you need to start. And, and don't have to wait till the Spirit comes upon you. Just start speaking in tongues. Once you start speaking in tongues, it will activate so many spiritual gifts. It will activate Jesus Christ in your life on a whole nother level. When I started speaking in tongues, one morning I woke up and I just called my friend DeAndre and I said, I'm tired of looking like a boy. I'm tired of wearing boy clothes. And she's like, what, are you serious? I'm like, yes, I'm tired of looking like a boy. It was after I started praying in tongues that I felt like this. See, you could never tell me that I wouldn't look like that for the rest of my life. I wanted to marry a woman and everything. You could never tell me that I would ever be standing here with makeup on my face and lashes on my eyes. You could never tell me that. But what I'm trying to tell you is, God will change your desires and replace them with his desires. He will, he will replace them with his desires. He changed the desires of my heart. People want to know, how did you transform? I ain't do this, baby. God did this. I didn't do this. This is his plan. I asked God who I was and what he created me to be. And he began to show me. He began to move in my life like no other. So now I record gospel music. I'll be, I'm, I'm coming on two gospel radio stations in two months. You'll hear me on every gospel radio station in the tri-state. So that's what I'm doing now. God replaced my desires with his desires. So it's no longer me sleeping with women. It's no longer me clubbing. It's no longer me drinking. It's no longer, I still struggle with some things. I still cuss like a salad. But guess what? When I go home, I pray and say, God, you got to take this from me because I can't stop. I still smoke cigarettes. I smoke about 50 cigarettes before I can't breathe out so nervous. But I know every time I do, 
When I go home, I pray to God, I say, Lord, can you take this from me? We cannot transform ourselves. The power of the Lord transforms us. Anything that you need help with, anything that you're trying to get rid of in your life, if you want a new life, ask God, baby, he's going to give it to you. I promise you, he will give it to you. Okay? And um, I think that basically sums and wraps it up about my life and what I got to say to y'all, okay? But again, my name is Marquita Grayson. Please do not call me gutter. Please do not call me bro, because people got a bad habit of keep calling me that. But I'm gonna tell you guys today, anything that you need, anything that you want, call on Jesus Christ, he got you. And then she said she couldn't do the event because her doctor said that she couldn't do the event no more because she keep on about she bipolar schizophrenia. And every time she say that, I be like, girl, stop saying that. You is not. Like, why you keep saying that? Like, we watched her for years. We watched her from gutter rapping, you know, doing what she do. And then now she is who she is. And throughout all this, who knew you was had a whole mental disorder? Bipolar schizophrenia. I worked in the mental institution and I seen bipolar schizophrenia patients and. They are different. They are different. They schizophrenic, you are really not in your right state of mind. But when I talk, I'm like, girl, you are not schizophrenic. Stop saying that. Like, where, when? I said, I don't believe that. Like, the doctor might have said that, but I'm not going with that, okay? I'm not going with that. So, time went on, time went on, and I'm still talking to her. And every time I talk to her, she seems very right in her state of mind. We have very intellectual, healthy conversations, very positive conversations. Actually, Marquita has been a blessing in my life since we've been interacting, right? So, a couple weeks ago, I'm like, I'm going to try her again. I'm going to shoot my shot again, right? So I was like, yo, what's up? I text her. And I was like, um, she hit me back. She was like, what's up? I said, never mind. <laughs> She was like, what, 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 you were asking about the event? I was like, yeah, I was, but that's being selfish. I don't want to compromise your health and everything. Never mind, never mind. She was like, nah, I can do it. The doctor said I can do it. I was like, I know you can do it. That's how I was texting you. I knew you could do it because I don't see that. And I know a lot of us don't see that. And that is the, one of the real platforms and reasons for her story. We never, ever know what somebody is going through. Bipolar schizophrenia is a really serious mental disorder. And for a person like Marquita to say she is, has a real diagnosis, and for her to... She is stable. She is stable, and this, two months ago, they was saying she, she couldn't work for five years, and she wasn't gonna be able to do X, Y, and Z, and she didn't record her gospel song, and now the doctor said she can come outside, and wow, all her music is streaming on all our media platforms, like, I don't see it. And we're not gonna, we're gonna repeat that in the name of Jesus. We're gonna repeat that. So, I really, really thank God, you know, that you were able to come and participate in this event. I really think it was a blessing. I really think it was meant for you to be here. And I thank you so much. Um, you might be great to take after your mom. I don't know. It sounds like you might be about to take your mom. I don't know. So, but, like I said, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So, once again, I would like to thank everybody for coming out. We have one more at the end of this, and then after that, we're going to announce our uh, silent auction winners. Woo! Okay, I have a poem. The poem is called Black Woman. A nation can rise no higher than me. Elijah said that back in the 70s. I took the scraps off my back and made it home cooking. I birthed a nation through racism, hatism, patience, being raped, abused, and misused while being left by my brother, but I'm a warrior. They say the black man is God, but it's me that walked the mall, that birthed the child. I gave birth to the brown, yellow, and the white. I am the Marcus, I am Malcolm, I am Huey. I'm the reason these brothers had the courage to fight. I won't stand here in 2021 and let you disrespect my legacy. Armed and dangerous, you gonna respect me. From being a single mom, raising your black child in these trenches, while being caught hoes and bitches, helping you stack your riches just for you to leave me for a white woman. What well, a day it stops. From the black man to the white man to the cops. 
See, I'm not angry, but I have a voice, and this shit gonna stop. I'm not nagging, just making sure I get my point across and you give me my props. Yes, I'm being loud because some act like they can't hear me. Fear of a black planet, well, the truth, the whole goddamn world is fear of me. A black woman, I am a mother. I am someone's daughter, I'm someone's wife. I'm called the queen, sometimes I'm called nice. But when I'm mean, I'm an angry black woman. I got other races wondering, wondering how I'm still standing. See, the crown is heavy, but it's still on my head. After being left for dead, broken and misled, my words still flow like Maya, a warrior like Harriet, survivor like Asada. Hmm, yeah, this crown is heavy, but you gonna give me my flowers. I'm being loud, but that's cause y'all act like y'all don't hear me. Fear of a black planet, nah, see the whole truth? The whole goddamn world is fearing me, a black woman, and this is her story.